Events like what happened in Paris over the weekend are depressing for many reasons. It's obvious these events are depressing from a purely human standpoint. It's easy to get lost wondering how awful it must feel to lose a friend or a family member in such a horrific way. Wondering what could possibly compel a person to shoot strangers in mass like that. And if you're like me, you wonder about that latter question obsessively. I sometimes imagine myself in the role of one of those killers. How it would be possible for me to load a few magazines. Carefully contemplating my intention to aim down the sights of a rifle at perfect strangers. To see the expressions of horror on their faces looking back at me. And to pull that trigger in cold blood, robbing them and their families of their future and all the possibilities that will never be. It's such a brutal concept, I can't imagine anything that would motivate me to act in that way, and so I get obsessively curious about what motivates these killers. But I'll tell you what else is depressing about events like these to me. As soon as they happen, people rush to social media to tell us with absolute certainty what the motivations of these killers are not. Immediately, without any complete investigation as to the facts of the case, we are told, hashtag not all Muslims are killers. We are told, hashtag terrorism has no religion. And if we inquire about the motivating role that radical Islamic faith plays in the actions of these terrorists, it is implied that we are bigots, broadly dismissive of an entire world culture. I know the people trending these hashtags have every good intention. They want to defeat world terror in the same way Way that we all do. And they want to do that in a way that doesn't implicate peaceful members of a faith who don't believe in its violent enforcement. But these hashtags and the thought behind them are damaging for two reasons. First, they do exactly what they intend to diminish. They ironically promote broad straw man generalizations. Second, they shut down comprehensive and honest discussion about ISIS and the other perpetrators of these acts of terror, thus making the effort to understand the enemy accurately more difficult. To the first point, hashtag not all Muslims. Hashtag terrorism has no religion. Hashtag Muslims are not terrorists, etc. All of these mantras are aimed at defeating the idea that Islam as a whole is responsible for these acts of terror, or all members of the Muslim faith are terrorists or support terror. Now that of course isn't true, but neither is the idea that critics of Islam believe it to be true. I know very few people who say sincerely hashtag yes all Muslims. I do know people who believe believe that radical Islamic faith plays a role in motivating these killers. Those two statements are not the same, and it's intellectually dishonest if we treat them as the same. So yes, hashtag not all Muslims, but many Muslims, a lot of Muslims, a group of Muslims too large for their common religious devotion to be mere coincidence with their violent tendencies. By extension, hashtag not all critics of Islam is an equally valid mantra. We aren't bigots. We aren't racists. We are not critical of people people or of culture. We are critical of ideas. All we want is to explore the facts of the case honestly. To the second point, we do no help to the effort to diminish these acts of terror by eliminating entire areas of discussion or debate immediately. We need to be honest about the extent to which radical Islam motivates ISIS. This is the Islamic State, after all, organized principally on a commitment to an Islamic caliphate. So let's be honest about why they are organized. Organized. They are not simply a club of terrorists who just so happen to love Allah too. Their devotion to the Islamic faith brings them together first. The violent tendencies are cultivated later with unquestionable faith as the catalyst. Understanding and acknowledging that motivation is key if we are serious about defeating them. As journalist and Yale political scientist Graham Wood writes, there is a key advantage to being open about ISIS's Islamic motivations. The ideological purity of the Islamic State has one compensating virtue. It allows us to predict some of the group's actions. To defeat an enemy, it helps to understand his motivations. It helps to understand his intentions. When you have a clear understanding of his intentions and his motivations, you can predict his next move. When you can predict his next move, you can defeat him. By ignoring their motivations and ignoring their intentions, we make defeating ISIS more difficult and less likely. We only empower them. Ultimately, there are worse things than being politically incorrect. There are worse things than hurting feelings or cultural insensitivity. There are worse things than offending someone. Namely, about 150 people dead in the streets of Paris for going to a concert or for drawing cartoons. Journalists with missing heads. Or the perpetual oppression of anyone who doesn't 
fit the ideological mold of the caliphate. It's not bigoted to wonder what motivates a person to such horrific acts and to wonder what role radical faith plays. Cultural sensitivity and intellectual honesty need not be enemies. I can say not all Muslims are terrorists, but Islam plays a role in motivating those who are. Under the same rules, those who want cultural sensitivity should be able to say you can critically analyze the Islamic faith without being a bigot. Fair is fair. Please and thank you. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate the thoughtful discussion down below and on Twitter at skag underscore three. So get at me over there. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.